Thanks very much for staying with us. Time now for Eye on Africa with me, Georgia Calvin-Smith. Tonight, at least six die in Tunisia in a synagogue shooting. A National Guard member opens fire on colleagues and worshippers on Tuesday before being killed himself. Also, 15 children are lost in the Shigari River in Sokoto State in Nigeria. Dozens of others are still missing since an overloaded boat capsized as they went to collect firewood. And we spotlight African and specifically Nigerian cinema here in Paris. The Nollywood Film Festival is back for its 10th anniversary. But first, the death toll from a shooting outside of a Tunisian synagogue has risen to six. Two Jewish pilgrims and three members of the security forces were killed at the historic Ariba synagogue on the island of Jerba. The shooter was a Tunisian National Guard who was later shot. Why, why, why? Confusion and chaos in the midst of a holy place. These images were shot by a Jewish worshipper at the Griba Synagogue in Tunisia. All around him, people sought cover as shots rang out from outside, just as worshippers were starting to leave. Security forces cordoned off the area. According to the Tunisian Interior Ministry, the assailant was a member of the National Guard. He first killed a colleague, taking his ammunition, and then attacked the synagogue killing several other security forces and at least two civilians. People were gathered around waiting after the first checkpoints. That's where the attack took place. During the pilgrimage, the synagogue in Jaba is extremely protected, so you need to cross several checkpoints in order to reach it. The attack took place at the checkpoint that's closest to the synagogue. The assailant was then shot dead by security forces. His motives are still under investigation. It's not the first time that the Gruba pilgrimage is marred by violence. In 2002, a truck bombing claimed by Al-Qaeda killed around 20 people at the entrance of the synagogue. One of the two civilian victims in the latest attack was a French national. He was young, 42 years old, a father. He left behind his wife and four kids. He ran a bakery in Marseille and was an active member of the community. He was known to be devout and kind. The Jewish community is grieving. France has condemned what it dubbed a heinous act, with President Macron vowing to fight anti-Semitic hatred. Northwestern Nigeria, divers in the Shigari River have been desperately searching for survivors since over a dozen children drowned there. Over 25 others are still missing after the overloaded boat capsized in Sokoto State on Tuesday. Samuel Okoye has more. Officials say the dead and missing children are aged between 10 and 15 years. The children were going to fetch firewood for sale when their boat capsized. There are fears the death toll could rise as divers search the Shagari River scene of the accident. It is the latest in a series of boat accidents in Sokoto State and some other parts of northwest Nigeria. In the absence of good roads in riverine areas, people have to travel by boats. Many of the boat accidents often record high death toll among women and children. Women and children are more involved in commercial activities like trading which make them to travel by boat frequently between riverine villages. A year ago, 29 hawkers, most of them children, drowned in the same area where this latest accident happened. Most past accidents were attributed to the use of poorly maintained boats, which are often overloaded with passengers. Some concerned Nigerians have called on authorities to take strict measures that will make boat travel safe. Samuel Goya there for us. Now, 11 hostages have been freed by kidnappers who abducted a group, originally numbering 40, from the Bigi Baptist Church on Sunday in Kaduna State in Nigeria. Some managed to escape at the time, and local clergy say that the kidnappers later released those that they found difficult to manage because of their age or health. 14, though, are still missing. Here in France, a former Rwandan military policeman has gone on trial charged with genocide. Philippe Ate Gatikimana fled from Rwanda to France following Hutu militia's 1994 slaughter of at least 800,000 Tutsis and those who tried to defend them. The 66-year-old is accused of involvement in several mass killings within the genocide. 
Now, the shadow of that dark national chapter still looms large over Rwanda. In March, a new mass grave was discovered from which more than 1,000 bodies have since been exhumed. Clément de Roma tells us more. Over the last month, these Rwandan villagers have been exhuming the bones of victims of the 1994 genocide, when Hutu militias massacred Tutsis and those who defended them. Here's the evidence. These are ropes that were used to tie the arms and legs of victims before killing them. The remains of more than 1,100 people have been found in this field in Mibirizi, a village in southern Rwanda. 29 years ago, at least 14,000 Tutsis were slaughtered around the church where they had taken refuge. For this survivor, who lost his entire family, finding the bodies has been a relief. I'm happy to recover these remains. We will place them in a memorial where they will be respected properly. Since 1994, thousands of victims have been found in the country. The Mibirizi site is the most largest find since 2020. Authorities are looking into how such a huge mass grave could go undiscovered for almost three decades. Marie Clary separates the dirt from the bones. She was just a child when she managed to escape this massacre. We arrived here at the Mibirizi church on April 9, 1994, seeking refuge. Three days later, the killers attacked us, but we resisted. But on April 13th, they came back. They threw grenades and started killing people. Despite well-preserved remains, it is nearly impossible to identify the dead. You can't recognize these people because they were buried without clothes. They were stolen. They were buried naked, so there's no way to recognize your family among these people. Many of the bodies recovered after the genocide were put to rest at 250 memorials across the country. The one in Mibirizi already holds 13,000 bodies and is almost full. We need another memorial because this one is already full of coffins. There's only room for six. They can't be buried outside, so we need another site to bury them properly. The search in Mibirizi will continue at least until mid-May, and more than 2,000 bodies are expected to be exhumed. At least one person's been killed and dozens injured in protests in the neighborhood of Ngor in Dakar. Demonstrators in the Senegalese capital took to the streets on Wednesday, accusing the government of being increasingly repressive and of neglecting ethnic Lebus who make up most of the community. Sam Brad, peace has more. After weeks of tension, an explosion of violence. Shots were fired, tear gas launched and buildings burned here in Ngor. Late on Tuesday night, the local mayor held talks with the Senegalese presidency. The solution we found was to cut this plot of land in two in order to satisfy both sides. We're in a country of peace and dialogue. We've called for dialogue. We sat around the table and discussed things. It's a good first step. Not all residents in the neighborhood are satisfied with the results of those talks. Since the end of Ramadan, the police have been putting up roadblocks in Ngor. No one can get in, no one can get out. And yet our leaders went to visit the president. The government instead should have come here to witness the destruction caused by the police in Ngor. They've killed, they have injured a population our mayor should have stayed here. The others should have come here. Personally, I don't agree with the deal. It'll be difficult to build a high school there alongside a police station. There is still a heavy police presence in Ngor and a feeling that this story is very much not over yet. Well, this week, Paris once again hosts a celebration of Nigerian film. This year marks the 10th anniversary of the Nollywood Film Festival. From the 11th to the 14th of May, the spotlight will be on cinema, not only from Africa's industry giant Nigeria, but also from elsewhere on the continent. One of the films having its world premiere at the event is What No One Knows, a tale about two girls who forge an unlikely friendship, and its writer and producer, Topi Laguda, also acts in the film alongside her daughter. Now, I asked her what the growing interest from big players like Netflix in African content means for the industry. What I tend to say to people when we're having this sort of discussion is, with 
the way you know there's been international exposure in, on the music industry, it's only a matter of time before that attention, you know, shifts to the film industry. And with the the types of filmmakers that we have today, bold filmmakers, they are ready to push boundaries, break any glass ceilings that are there. It only makes sense that you know we start to get interest internationally, depend regardless of wherever it comes from. Uh, so why is the, actually the the Nollywood Film Festival for the last ten years? Why has it chosen Paris to be the platform for the spotlighting of what is actually you know an anglophone titan of African filmmaking? From my perspective, I'd say there is no better place to you know to showcase films from African countries, because we do have a lot of Africans here. And it only makes sense that, you know, we, we do it here. But um, um, having films from, from South Africa, having films from Senegal, having films from Nigeria, you know, it, it, it's, it's a, 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 an amalgamation of films from every part of Africa. And for me, it doesn't matter where it's shown. The main thing is films are bringing people together from all walks of life, and that's what we want to celebrate. Well, thank you so much for coming in, Tope. When the, the festival me. goes on until when? Uh, from tomorrow till Sunday. Are you coming? Oh, I've been put on the spot. Uh, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm definitely, I will try and make it down. Well, That'll thank you great. again so much for coming in thank you to for speak having to me. France 24. Thank, thank you. you for joining us. Do stay tuned. More coming up after a short break. France 24, your window on the world. Liberté, égalité, actualité.